So just why has Italy been hit so hard by this pandemic? And what is the situation really like there now? Well, joining me is Professor Salvatore Maggiori, head of the intensive care unit at Chieti Hospital in the Abruzzo region of the country. Uh, Professor, many thanks to you for joining us on the agenda. Here in Britain, the National Health Service is stretched to its limit. How would you describe the situation in your hospitals in central Italy? The situation in my hospital and the, in the hospitals which are uh, close to mine, so the, the hospitals of the whole region, this is a small region in the center of Italy, is very, very difficult. Um, uh, particularly, but not only, uh, concerning uh, the critical care beds. Uh, as uh, you know, we had uh, an incredible pressure on the whole healthcare system, and particularly in some northern region. But now, uh, more and more regions uh, in Italy are experiencing the same uh, the same uh, pressure, uh, even with difference uh, differences. Uh, in our uh, region now the pressure is going up and up and up every day and uh, uh, in my hospital in particular we have a very tough situation uh, we had uh, completely full uh, our, the, the general ICU uh, in in the in the in the hospital is now uh, fully uh, completely full of uh, COVID-19 uh, patients. We have opened a second ICU, which is also uh, completely full. We are going to open a third ICU uh, in, the, in the hospital. So the, the problem is that uh, we are trying to create uh, new ICU beds. Uh, this requires not only uh, place, but also equipment. Uh, this is a, 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 a very uh, complicated uh, issue because, uh, uh, as you know, there is a shortage of uh, uh, medical equipment for critical care in the in the world. Uh, I, I would say in the world, uh, or at least in the regions in the in the countries that have been hit, uh, particularly by the COVID-19. And of course, the problem also uh, concern uh, healthcare workers, uh, uh, both uh, physicians and nurses. Uh, so th this situation is very, very complicated, really. Key workers uh, must be being pushed to their limits. Um, do you think you might have reached the peak effect of this virus where you are? Uh, can things deteriorate further, or do you think they will get better from here on in? It's difficult to say. Uh, we, we, we really, the, 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 the true answer is that we don't know. But the impression is that uh, we are not at the peak now. One of the problem, of course, is also how uh, the forecast is done based on which data. And uh, you know that uh, different countries have uh, adopted different strategies uh, concerning uh, the identification of these uh, patients. In some countries like uh, South Korea, for example, the uh, oral swab has been done extensively in uh, our country, in Italy, this has been uh, limited in general, but with difference also uh, among regions. So uh, also the data are not consistent across different regions and different countries. My impression, and, and this is shared also with other uh, colleagues from other regions, particularly from the north, uh, confirm, confirm uh, my impression that the peak is is not re, is not still reached, and so we really expect a further increase in the in the next few days, maybe one week. But then we will see. The the the, 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 the real answer is that we don't know. And what about you? Talked about uh, Professor your strategy. Do you have any advice for other countries uh, in terms of strategy? The most important is not to underestimate this, which means that uh, countries needs to be, need to be prepared and uh, 
the, I think that uh, the, the single measure which is more, uh, more useful is containment. So do not hesitate to lock down everything as soon as possible because once the virus has spread over different, different uh, areas, then the, the spreading is much more uh, difficult to uh, control. The UK has just started lockdown. Uh, initially, uh, it's due to finish on April the 13th. It may well continue uh, past that date. Some people are not taking lockdown seriously. What would you say to those people? This is a disaster. This is a disaster. We need to be all responsible. This is not the time for people to take an individual initiative. Even one single person may really, uh, not following the, the, the lockdown, may put at risk uh, wall region, wall area. This is uh, absolutely important. This is also what happened at the beginning here in Italy. You know, uh, when you have a new epidemic, uh, you know that it is serious, but we did not know uh, at which point we, we, we should stop everything. Because, of course, there is an equilibrium because, uh, between uh, healthcare uh, needs and also economic needs. Uh, but uh, uh, at the very end, what we have understood, uh, this is extremely important, that uh, the lockdown at the uh, containment phase should be done by everybody, no exclusion, just keeping the uh, uh, active, the, uh, the services which are uh, really strictly uh, needed for the um, ordinary life. Can you tell me, Professor, what drugs you're using or you're trying to use or develop? Um, I know there isn't a vaccine yet, but what are the medical uh, weapons you have at the moment? Uh, the true answer to this question is that we have no weapon at the moment. We are testing and uh, uh, different uh, drugs which have been uh, initially used in China, uh, so antiretroviral uh, drugs, uh, anti-inflammatory drugs and uh, immuno... Um, modulators like tocilizumab and uh, also anti-malaric drug uh, like chloroquine. Uh, uh, some uh, is using uh, corticosteroids, uh, but the truth is that we have no clear evidence that none of these drugs may, uh, may work indeed. Well, all I can say is stay safe to you, Professor, and all your staff at Chieti Hospital. Many thanks to you for joining us on the agenda. Thank you, and uh, uh, be safe too.